Today we're gonna do section A for um, uh, CDL class A uh, uh, automatic truck uh, pre-trip inspection. Okay, for section A. All right. So from section A, let me give you a little bit overview of what are the parts components. So section A would be the engine component, and engine component part uh, section. Section B is everything of the tractor on uh, section B wise. Section C what will be your trailer, okay, your trailer. And then the coupling system, this is uh, for the uh, linkage between the tractor and the trailer. Okay, those 11 items you gotta memorize. Okay, so for this video, we're just gonna do on section A only, okay? So we're gonna start up with this one. We're gonna start up with the top lights, okay? Top lights, as you can see up there. So here, top lights where you can call the ID lights as well. Properly mounted, good working condition, not cracked or broken, none missing, amber in color, okay? Then now is the headlight, headlight, okay? Headlight, properly mounted, both left and right lights are in good working, uh, working condition, not cracked or broken, none missing, high beam and low beam, okay? So we got it. High beam and low beam, then you want both of our lights up. And so you, what, what you're doing is you're pointing on to both sides. Okay? And that, was, that should be fine. All right, next one. Indicator lights, the turn signals, properly mounted, good working condition. Not cracked or broken, not missing, amber in color. Forward emergency flasher, left and right, lights are working properly. So basically it's here. So you're gonna have the lights here, all right, on the side. So that was, that's where you're pointing to, okay? Look under the truck. So we're gonna look under the truck in a minute, okay? Nothing hanging, nothing leaking, not leaning from side to side. Leaning from side to side could mean a flat tire or suspension problem. What does that mean? Means during the exam, you have to go all the way down, okay? Because you're checking, make sure there's nothing there's no water, well, we just water it, so it doesn't count. <laughs> but we look under water, we'll we check for if there's any oil, and we make sure that it's not leaning from side to side, okay? If it's leaning from side to side, that means either your shock or your tire flat, right? That's why we check them down here as we look. During the exam, you have to come down and look, just like you're actually doing the exam itself, okay? All right, so come back up. Now we're gonna come up Right. So for this truck, for the exam truck, you can put your feet on the side and pull it, okay? This truck is larger, so it's heavier, so what you can do is you can push over from the side, okay? It's a lot easier to open, okay? And when you open it, nice and easy. There we go. All right, okay. Now we're going to come on this side. Alternator. That's your alternator, okay? Not this one, this is the AC compressor. As you can see, the linkage, right? That's for AC compressor. So this is the alternator, all right? For the alternator, built driven, properly mounted, good working condition, not bent, break or crack, no illegal weld, missing no bolts. So, you, so there's different type of trucks. So some trucks is built driven, some truck is gear driven. So for this one, it's a built driven, as you can see, the built right here, yeah? So that's why it's a built driven, okay, component. All right, next one. Electrical wire running from alternator, properly mounted, good working condition, no cuts, frays, or burn marks, away from hot engine parts, properly insulated. Okay, so here, these are the electrical wires. Right, so that's where you're pointing it to. Okay, so that's where the, where is that? All right, next one. So here, number three, fan clutch, belt driven, properly mounted, good working condition, no bent, break or crack, no illegal well, missing no bolt. So where's the fan clutch? You see that this is the fan blade, right? So you got a fan clutch right here. That would be the one. All right, now fan blade on this one, fan blade. All right. Fan blade, probably mounted, good working condition, not cracked, not broken, or missing, all right? Built, probably mounted, good working condition, no cut or fray, no more than three-fourth inch of play, 
So the belt is this one right here, right? So we want to make sure that it's a uh, property uh, that it doesn't have that much play on it. So how do you check it? You want to go with your hand and feel it, feel the touch, right? Or you have to, the best and more accurate is to use the, the uh, range to figure out if how much leverage it has. Okay, that's how you check the uh, belt, all right? Okay, after that, belt. Now the hoses, properly mounted, good working condition. No holes, cuts, bubbles, not leaking any fluids. So the hoses wise, again, we just pretty much point it to the hoses, right? Uh, when we point to the hoses, we gotta know what they are, right? So let's say this one, is that liquid or is that air? air. What's here? Liquid. liquid, right? So this would be the liquid. So with the liquid, then you obviously you wanted this, you do not want to say that it's not leaking any air because it's liquid, vice versa, okay? So whichever one that you want to point out is fine. Let's say if you point out to these, right? What's in here? Air. Air. So if it's air, don't say it's not leaking any air, uh, any uh, fluids, right? Don't say it like that, right? So you got to make sure your appropriate words that you're going to say, that's what you're going to uh, uh, use, okay? All right, next one. So after the hoses, then we got a washer fluid reservoir. Properly mounted, good working condition. Not cracked or broken, not leaking any fluid, not missing any bolt. Cap, properly secure, check daily to make sure at proper level. So we're looking at this here, all right? This would be the one. So this is for the windshield, right? So fluid for the windshield, yeah? Okay, all right, next one. Electrical wire, properly mounted, good working condition. No cut, frays, burn marks, properly insulated, away from hot engine compartment. So when you point, what be these electrical wires? Okay, that's what you're looking at. As you can see, it's away from the hot engine, right? And it's properly insulated. You can see that, look at here, inside is the wire, right? It's properly insulated, it's not just by itself, yeah? All right, so that's how it's done. All right, so now we're gonna go on the other side. So this now is the driver's side, right? Driver's side now, we're gonna come over here on this side. Now we're examining this side, a portion of it. All right, so first one is the water pump, okay? Now, built is built driven, properly mounted, good working condition, not bent, break, or crack, no illegal well, missing no boat, not leaking any fluid or the water, right? So what we're looking at is here. That's your uh, water pump, all right? The next one is the water pump built. That would be this one. You can see the built right here, right? So then again, the same thing, water pump built is properly mounted, good working condition, no cuts or frays, no more than three fourth inch of play, all right? So now air compressor is gear driven, properly mounted, Good working condition, not bent, break, or crack, no illegal well, missing no boat, not leaking any air, not making any funny sounds. Attached to the air compressor is the governor. It should be properly mounted, good working condition, not bent, break, or crack, no illegal well, not leaking any air, not making any funny sound, missing no boat. As you can see, this is repeat of words. However, because we're talking about the air compressor and, and the governor. Now, in reality, right here, where the location is for the air compressor, it's all the way down in there, okay? Now, the examiner might ask you, where is it located? So what you're looking for, as you can see, the thick tube here, right? This is a thick red line. And that red line is your air, uh, emergency line, right? So this emergency line, it goes all the way down. All the way down in there, right? So you're gonna tell them, says, follow this line, go all the way down there, that will be your air compressor and your governor, right? So as you notice, why is it so important about this part? It's because when you're doing your air brake, it's like, oh, now it's kind of linking together because that's where the air compressor is. So it's pumping air, right? That's what air compressor does. It pumps air. And then the governor goes and cuts it out, right? So that's where the position is, okay? That location right there, right? So now it makes more sense when you're actually doing your air brake, 
right? Now that's the first one. Now next one. Sorry about that. Let's go. Uh, wait, where are you? Alright, air compressor. Now the power steering pump. It's gear driven. Properly mounted, good working condition, not bent, break or crack, no illegal well, missing no boat, not leaking any fluids. Again, the same thing. Second one that you're gonna point in will be this one, power steering pump. All right, again, examiner may ask you, where's your power steering pump located? Here. You see this one right here? That's your power steering fluid reservoir, right? Now, if you look on the bottom here, you see the, the tube? You see this tube, right? Where from the bottom tube goes all the way inside. You see that? Goes all the way inside, along the line, all the way inside. That's where it's located, okay? So if the examiner asks you where is it located, you're just gonna follow from the power steering. It makes common sense, right? Because where's the power steering pump? The pump again, what does it do? It pumps it, just like our heart, right? Our heart function is to pump. Letting, allowing our blood flow streams able to move and turn, right? Same thing here, power steering pump, it pumps it so that this fluid it can go and cycle, right? So again, that's a power steering pump, okay? Now next one, oil fill, properly mounted, good working condition, not bent, break or crack, no illegal weld, not leaking any fluid. The cap needs to be properly secured, but also easy on, easy off. This is where I fill up my oil, engine oil, right? So that would be here, right? That's your, the yellow one, right? That's where it is, all right? Next one, this is oil dipstick, okay? Engine oil dipstick. So as you know, that's where a, a, out of the truck has those, right? So you gotta know how, where the location is. And that's in general, that's where you're gonna point to. Now, oil dipstick. Properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break, or crack. No illegal will. Not leaking any fluid. Cap needs to uh, needs to be properly secured, but also easy on, easy off. I can check if the oil is at the correct level. By number one, remove the oil dipstick and clean it. Number two, reinsert the stick and pull out again. Number three check if the oil level is between minimum and maximum. What does that mean? It means that during the exam, the examiner might ask you, how do you check it? How do you check uh, your oil, uh, oil dipstick? Well, so you're gonna tell them, sis. Again, you don't need to take it out, but by action, you need to say, I'm gonna pull it out, I'm gonna clean it up, put it back in, pull it out again, check for your minimum and maximum, okay? Once you check it, is it at a proper level? If it's not, obviously, you're gonna fail oil, All right? Now that you're gonna put it back in, and you're done, okay? So that's the procedure that you need to check it. And again, we don't need to take it out, All right? Okay, now after that, all your dipstick, then this water coolant reservoir, or we call it water coolant tank, that's fine. Properly mounted, good working condition, not cracked or broken, not leaking any fluid, not missing any bolts. Cap properly secured, check daily to make sure at proper level. Again, we're looking at this one right here, okay? Water cooling reservoir, right? Uh, now, how do you check it? If the examiner asks you how do you check it, like okay, right here, you see the minimum, uh, minimum and maximum, right? It's got the level here, okay? For our truck especially, for our truck specifically, if you're in the yard and you start your engine, okay? And if it, won't, if it won't start, don't keep on cranking it, okay? The engine is telling you something, okay? The engine should be able to very easily able to start the truck, right? Now, if it doesn't start, first thing you do is check your water level. Because if your water level is below the minimum, it's not gonna start, okay? So what does that mean? Well, fill up. You're a truck driver, right? <laughs> we gotta fill up the oil. I mean, uh, fill, fill up the water water level, right? Or the coolant that we're gonna fill it up, okay? Most likely that will be the case. Either that or your oil. These two are the ones that you need to check at all times. Make sure it's at proper level. All right, next one. All right. Power steering fluid reservoir. Okay, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break, or crack. 
no illegal will, missing no boat, not leaking any fluid, cap property secure, check daily to make sure at proper level. All right, so that would be this one right here, all right? That we talked about earlier, remember? The power steering reservoir, right? So we gotta make sure it's at the proper level, okay? So we go open the, the cap, same thing, make sure, check, or you can check the level here and make sure it's at proper level, okay? All right, next one. Hoses, properly mounted, good working condition. No holes, cuts, bubbles, not leaking any fluids. Again, hoses here. If there's any hoses, fluids, you just point to this one. This will be good, right? Because this will be the oil, right? Because this is what? Power steering fluid, right? Reservoir, right? So it's not air, <laughs> okay? Make sure you don't say there's air inside, okay? Then the next one, electrical wire, properly mounted, good working condition. No cuts, frays, fur marks, properly insulated away from hot engine compartments, all right? Electrical wires, you're gonna point here. That will be your electrical wire, all right? So you don't have to go everything, all the electrical wires, but just point to the electrical wire, that will be good. All right, so this part is the top can portion for the driver's side, all right? Memorize by heart, so you know exactly by the procedures, so it's easier for you to remember all the components. Now, after this, I want you to memorize by S, S, B, W. Okay, first S, steering. So what I want you to look at is the steering right here. All right? The steering wheel, right? What are we steering? Common sense, right? What are we steering? Wheel. Obviously, we're steering our wheel, right? Common sense. Again, so if we're steering our wheel, does it come down like this? Or does it come down like this? Or does it come down like this? Which way? It would go like this? Like that, right? So if it comes down like that, right here, look here, that's your steering column, right? So you can see it goes all the way in. That's where your steering wheel is, okay? All right, so it's not like magical, right? <laughs> all right, so here's your steering column, okay? All right, again, here's your steering column. Properly mounted, good working condition. No bent, cracked, or broken. No illegal wheel, all right? Steering boot, properly mounted, good working condition. No cuts, tears, rips, okay? Here are, here's your steering boot, okay? Steering column, steering boot, all right? Okay, next one. Here, steering box. So as you can see, it's continuation, right? We're just going all the way straight down, okay? Steering column, now steering box right here, all right? Steering box, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break, or crack, no illegal wheel, missing no boat, not leaking any fluids, okay? Pitman arms, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break, or crack, no illegal wheel, missing no boat, secure with a castle nut and color pin, right here. That would be this one, all right? This is your pin and arm. As secure with castle nut and color pin. And you can see the pin right there, right? That's the pin, right? Next one, all right. Drag link, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break, or uh, not bent, crack, or broken. No illegal will. That will be this one. And again, it's a continuation, right? So this will be this one, the drag link, okay? Now after drag link, continuation again, go inside the last one little uh, arm there, that will be the steering arm, right? Probably mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break or crack, no illegal will, secure with castle nut and color pin. Same thing again. That's castle nut and color pin right there, right? Right there, on the top, right there, okay? That will be the one, all right? Okay, now, that will be the first S, okay? Again, what's the first S? Uh, steering, steering. Steering, right? Now, S, S, B, W, right? What's the second S? Suspension, all right, suspension. For suspension, imagine imagine this truck without suspension. What, what would happen when you drive it? <laughs> right, you will be shaking like crazy, right? So that's why the truck needs a suspension. And suspension, what you're looking for is a thin leaf, a long thin leaf, okay? And thin leaf, and that will be your leaf spring, okay? And on top here, that will be your hanger, just like your coat hanger, right? Hanger on this side, Leaf spring, four items only, right? You got a U-bone shackle and shock. Easy? 
four items to remember, okay? Right. So again, we're looking for the thin leaf, and here it is. Leaf spring, okay? That's your leaf spring, okay? And here's your hanger, right? We got a hanger, leaf spring, U-ball and shackle. You can see that U shape, right? U-ball and shackle right here, and then you got your shock, okay? Right there, All right? So now we're gonna read it, okay? All right, hanger. Property mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break or crack, no illegal well, missing no boat. Leaf spring, property mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break or crack, no illegal well, none missing. Okay, u bow and shackle, property mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break or crack, no illegal well, not missing any boats. Shock, property mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break or crack, no illegal well, missing no boat, not leaking any fluids. As you notice, everything is so much repeated, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Any metal, that's what you say. Property mounted, the working condition. No bend, okay. break, no crack, no illegal well, and you'll be, you'll be fine, no, no missing. okay? No missing something, right? So depending on the components, okay? So if you do it like what we do uh, with it, Yes, it seems like there's a lot of repetitive, but you cannot just group them and say, all these here, all property mounted, good working, you can't do that, okay? You have to say it separately. Why? Because for the examiner, they have the sheet and the check mark. Did you say property mounted, good working on this shit, right? If you don't say it, the points is deducted, okay? And they go, yeah, you got a picky examiner, they'll deduct you, okay? So it's a lot of repetitive words, but that's all you have to do. Okay, you say it based on the words. Be creative with your own words is fine, but don't be too creative, okay? All right, <laughs> okay. All right, let's go again. What's the first S? Steering. Steering. Okay, second S? Suspension. Suspension. Number three? S, S? Brake. B for brake, right? Now we're gonna go to brake. Now for brake, we're looking for this. We're looking for a round cylinder. Okay, we're looking for a round cylinder and that will be a brake chamber, okay? Yeah, watch. So here is a brake. We're looking for the round cylinder, you see that? Okay, now, brake, that would, uh, then obviously on the top, won't be on the bottom, because common sense, hoses would be on the top, right? So here is your brake hose. And what's inside the brake hose? Air, Air right? Not a fluid, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so this will be your brake hose, brake, uh, uh, brake chamber, your push rod and slack adjuster, then you're gonna point total five items, right? One, two, three, then you're gonna point inside, brake drum, brake cap, okay? Inside of it, all right? Okay, five items right there. All right, so here again, brake holes, more brake lines, right? Probably mounted, good working condition. No cut, bubble, or tear, not leaking any air, not making any funny sounds, properly insulated. Brake chamber, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break, or crack. No illegal weld, missing no bolts, uh, no loose or missing clamps, okay? Push rod and slack adjuster, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break, or crack. No illegal weld, missing no bolts. No more than one inch of clay. Brake drums, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break, or crack. No illegal weld. No residue build up, minimum of half inch of life. Brake pads, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break or crack, no illegal well, no residue build up, minimum of half, a uh, quarter inch of life, All right? So again, as you notice, that's the way I put uh, the material together. We didn't want it to put all the messy, uh, different information on it first. We wanted to show you that, as long as you say property mounted good working condition, that's the standard. And then after that, each component has its own specialty, right? That you gotta mention about, okay? And you'll be good, right? Next one. So again, let's review again. What is uh, the four items that we did? Steering. 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 Second. Suspension. Suspension. And then? Brakes. People brake. And then? W for whale, right? S, S, B, W. All right, now we're gonna talk about the wheel. All right, for the wheel here, when we talk about the tire, the wheel, now we're gonna mention here for the tire itself, we're gonna mention ICD, inflation condition depth, okay?
okay? Inflation means inflated into manufacturer specification. So if you look on the side here, they all say words, right, on the side. Mm -hmm. And then there will be, the manufacturer is gonna tell you how much air you need to have. So that's the inflation. How much air you put in this tire, okay? From the manufacturer. I, C. C is for condition. The condition of the tire itself. There's two parts to it, right? First part is the condition is no cut or bubble larger than one inch, okay? Second part to the condition. The condition of the tire it must be original. It cannot be re-bred or re -cut. Make sense? All right, so this one must be original. However, that's for the front tire. The back tire, the back tire you're allowed to have re-thread and re -cut. Does not have to be original. Okay, why is that? Huh? There you go. Because back here we have two dual tires, right? If you have dual tires, you can see there's two tires here, right? If one of the tire goes out, the other tire is still able to maintain the whole of the truck and you're able to pull it on the side, right? However, in the front here, if this tire goes out, you're done, right? So that's why it's important that the front tire must be original, cannot be re thread or recapped. Yeah. Okay. So, what does that mean, re thread or recap? How does that? What does that mean by that? What do I mean by that? It means it's just like the old day, the shoemaker, right? They take it out and put a new layer on there. Okay. That's what you can do for the back tire. Okay. And you'll see it. There's a mark. If you look at it carefully on the tire, there will be a mark on it, right? So somewhere on the tire, you'll see it that there's a mark. There's a layer that they change and you're able to see it, okay? On this truck, uh, apparently it's on the bottom probably, okay? So here you're not able to see it, but you'll see the mark on the line itself, okay? All right, now let's move on forward, okay? All right, I see the last one is what? D, right? D for the depth, the depth itself, okay? How deep is it, you know? So for the front tire, has to be a minimum of 430 seconds. In the back is 230 seconds. All right, all right, okay, let's read it. What we need to say, tire, I, C, D, inflation, condition, depth. I should be inflated to manufacturer specification. The specification is written on the tire. C, must be original, no recap or re-threads. No cuts, rips, bubbles, larger than one inch, than an inch. D, Minimum thread depth of 430 seconds. Rim, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, cracked, or broken. No illegal well. Air valve, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break, or crack. No illegal well. Not leaking any air. Not making any funny sound. Lug nuts, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break, or crack. No illegal well. All present. No rust or shiny threads. Those are the indication of looseness. Hub seal, properly mounted, good working condition. Not cracked, not broken, or leaking any fluids. All right, so here are the components. You got a tire, you got a rim, you got a hub, uh, the uh, air valve, right? You got air valve, and you got lug nuts, as you can see, so you're gonna point all these lug nuts, right? And you got a hub seal, right? All right, here, the difference between this one is this one is hub seal, the middle one, the middle one is the axle seal, okay, axle seal, and then the back one is hub seal, okay. So it's H A H, haha. -ha. So you won't remember, you won't forget, <laughs> all right. So you remember that's how you memorize it, haha. -ha. Okay, all right. Now that's your section A. So again, after you exam, after you finish seeing everything, don't rush. Okay, don't rush in terms of uh, just say I'm done. What I would like you to do is go back from beginning, review through, did you miss anything? Make sure you cover all the components and double check, make sure you have everything. All right, that's number one. Secondly, if the examiner asks you, says, are you sure? Are you sure you're done? They're giving hands already. That means you're missing something, right? Did you say you're coupling? Right? Keep in mind, any part doesn't matter if it's A, B, or C. Always do your coupling first. 
for our video on this one, we're not going to do the coupling because I already did that on previous uh, video for coupling. So again, be sure you do your coupling first before your section. Alright? Good luck. Done.